Okay, so the next package manager we're going to take a look at is the one TJ did called NeoVim Kickstart. So I do my which NeoVim command and I see the last thing that I was doing was lazy starter kit. Now I want to move to, um, I'm going to switch NeoVim to TJ and saw a bunch of files get deleted, a bunch of things getting removed. Now we're seeing that TJ starter kit has converted to NeoVim. Now notice in this particular starter kit a little bit of a difference. It actually is telling me in the lower right hand corner uh, about all parsers are up to date and Lua is installing and I got to press enter to continue. That's okay. It's just, it's just a different style of startup. There's nothing wrong with that. Notice also it's th you're seeing in the bottom, you're seeing a bunch of information that's going on about the, um, about the language, uh, languages that TreeSitter knows about. So I'm getting that information in the lower right hand corner of my screen as opposed to, I'm sorry, the lower left hand corner of my screen as opposed to getting that information from the upper right hand, which is where Noise by default would provide that information if Noise was being used. So we're going to get out of this one and we're going to check the startup time and just to see how where this one is. Okay. Um, and we're going to see what happens with that first install. It just looks like NeoVim. Doesn't really look like there's anything there, but we know something's there. We know that we saw lazy coming in doing things. So we're just going to type lazy and see what happens. And there's that lazy package manager. So Notice right away we've got 24 plugins loaded with this package manager, which is fine. We go over and take a look at the profile, 56.97 millisecond startup time. Again, really good startup time. My personal goal is to see anything under 100 milliseconds. If we take a look at this startup time and I'm running as fast as my, I just blink and it's there. NeoVim is loaded, so I'm not expecting or being distracted by nonsensical information or, or huge delays other than the very first boot which is expected because we were bootstrapping the entire product now we know that tj is also the author of telescope so we expect to find telescope in here and so we do telescope sure enough it's there so we do telescope find files, and at this point we would expect default behavior. So we have a license file, we start using that control N, control P, and we expect to be able to go up and down in this distro just the way we did the other one. So license file, he's got some kickstart test file, which is great. Okay, he's got his main Lua file. Uh, he's got the plugin file, which is doing nothing. So there's that custom plugins. This is where you would add your code to add your customizations of your plugins. They would go into this directory. If we take a look at Kickstart plugin auto format, kind of some neat stuff he's doing there. Also debug. So this particular distribution, I've seen several of TJ's videos and I know he's done stuff with Bash Bunny on debugging. I would go in and study what he's doing from a debugging standpoint to understand how I could incorporate the debug adapter protocol into my NeoVim experience because that's the next thing I'm adding. Since I've converted from Packer to Lazy, I was in that process of bringing the debug adapter protocol in and when I chose to go to Lazy, I stopped that work and you'll see that in another video. But I, I really like what I see TJ doing here with the debug and with the auto format. So the other thing that we would take a look at possibly is we just hop into as an init file and you see in that lower right hand corner, you got fidget giving you information as the environment is being diagnosed. Now, if we do that same command LSP info, we see that we've got a buffer attached. So we've got the Lua LS attached to this buffer. We don't see null LS, that's okay. He's chosen not to use that particular package. So if you wanted to see the difference between how you get two packages, two plugins attached to the same buffer, now we can look at the differences between what Lazy Starter Kit is doing and what TJ Starter Kit is doing to understand how to manage those differences if they're important to us, okay? So if we go on and kind of just rummage around in this file, we're gonna see, you see in that same basic default bootstrapping He's updating the path and then inside of here, when we get to line 66, we're going to start to see the plugins that he's loaded. And because he converted this thing, my guess, this is just my guess, my guess is his first goal was to get it to work, not to worry about 
how he could do commands and and whether he enabled or disabled plugins because he wasn't necessarily after the start fastest startup time possible he wanted something that worked and so what you see here is a very nice configuration that puts content in here that gets you to you know get you up and running so for example if we look at get signs if you want to know how to change get sign plugin there you go right there so i can look at that line of code right there and i can see it I can see what he's got configured. Now I can go edit files and I can actually watch the behavior. And so for me, this has been much more powerful than just looking at the code. I want to look at the code in action, if you will. So that's why I took the time to write that little script I showed you at the beginning so I can, I can experiment with somebody's plugin live. So this is a really cool, cool, cool setup that he's got here. So you, can, you also, also can find, if you wanted to know how to do uh, telescope, the author of Telescope is showing you this is the way I configured it. So we can learn from that. We can also look at how he's doing the native FCF. So you can see what he's done here. A little bit of a change in syntax from uh, Packer to this. Not a big deal here, but this works. You know, so you see this coming in. Now you're going to start seeing dependencies with Telescopes, with text objects and installers and stuff like that. It's worth looking at this starter kit to understand. You know, you, now you've got two that are done with Lazy. And you can say, how can I use these things to make my environment different? How do I make my environment better? So these are both excellent startup kits to use. So you see, uh, he's got everything in one file, nothing wrong with that. He's just got it all in one place. So you can look at it, you can study it, you can understand how to use it. Uh, you can find some really cool things in here. Like this is probably one of my favorite ones that I've seen several people using, this Yank. So it highlights that text for you right away, which is cool, which I kind of like that. Okay, which key came on? Okay, that's cool. So there's which key. We should be able to do the same kind of commands. There we go. This is beautiful. Great work, TJ. Nice work you've done here. It makes this one really easy to, to learn from. Um, hey, more telescope. There's your control D, control U going on. So if he's doing some stuff there, that's kind of cool. You can learn about. So the really cool stuff in here, you know? So Lord, take these things. Oh, here we go with rust, okay. Rust. Okay, let's go. That we got to go do that experiment right now. Let's see what happens when we go rust. So we're going to get out of this, and let's go, let's go play. Okay. So you notice at the bottom, I'm using um, Tmux. So I'm going to go over to my LSP directory, which has nothing but a bunch of text files and test files with the proper language extension. So we're going to launch we're going to launch NeoVim and see what happens with test.rs. I have not done this before. This is live. I'm going to find out what happens. Okay, so all parsers are up to date. That's great. LSP info. No clients. Ah, okay. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Let's take a look at Rust. So, yes, Rust. So, what we're going to do is, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go into NeoVim by itself. And we're going to go into Mason. So, we're going to type in the Mason command. And we're going to see that the Lua language server is installed. So we're going to search this buffer. Remember, this is just a buffer, so we can search it. We're going to find Rust, and we're going to install Rust. Go back to the top. Okay, Rust is being installed. Okay, now Rust is installed. Let's see what happens when we add a file with the Rust extension. What I'm curious to know is, does this starter kit, by defining and installing the language, does it attach Rust, the Rust analyzer, to my buffer? So we just NeoVim test RS. That's good actually. So that's actually good. I don't have a proper Rust configuration for this folder, so I don't. Ex I expected that error. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a project. So the project we're going to create is cargo uh, new sample. That's the first thing we're going to do. So we're going to go into the sample directory, and we're going to type a tree command. And we're going to see that we do have a Rust file. So that's all we care about is main.rust. And the plumbing, the infrastructure is all set up. So um, I'm not expecting to get any linting errors or anything like that with the environment at this point. So if I hop right back into NeoVim, I want to go into Mason. That's the first thing I want to check for. Now recall, this is just a buffer, which means we can search it. So I'm going to search for Rust. There is Rust. And I'm going to install that. Now Rust is being installed. I'm going to wait for Rust to finish and I'm going to exit. So now we notice that we have two language servers installed. Okay, I'm going to get out of this altogether. Get out of this one. And then we're going to go right back in 
we're just going to load NeoVim from the directory that has a Rust project to see what happens. Pay attention to the lower right hand corner and the lower left hand corner of the screen because we might get information coming back at us. Okay, all parsers are up to date. That's good. That's in the lower left hand corner. Now we're going to use the telescope find command. Just because I like using telescope. And we're going to look at this hello world Rust. I'm expecting the language server to attach to this buffer when I press enter. Let's see what happens. Oh, notice over in the lower right hand corner, the Rust analyzer is debugging or diagnosing this, this particular buffer. So now if I go back and do LSP info, hey, I got Rust on my machine. I've got a language server protocol ready to go with Rust. So, and all I did to make this work, I did a few simple steps. I installed a starter kit, no problem. I navigated to a directory that had Rust code in it. I used Mason to install Rust, and then I added a file that had Rust in it. Now, all that could have been done automatically, but in this starter kit, you have to do some, ex you have to do some extra steps. That's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. You may have an environment where you only want one language, uh, language server protocol enabled on your machine, which is fine. You may want them loaded all the time. You may want to control specifically when those are happening. That's also fine. It's all a matter of what your preferences are and what improves your personal workflow as you're trying to get job done. But what you're seeing here is starter kit that has been done by, by TJ, really nice work, something that you can study and learn from, especially if you want to uh, learn about the debug adapter and maybe how to do debugging with, with NeoVim. And also, uh, if you want to see how the author of Telescope actually configures Telescope, you can get some good ideas from the starter kick, and that's the basic configuration for Telescope. There's much more you can do with it, but this is enough to get you started. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Remember, this is a seven-part video series where I'm covering different NeoVim installations. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. I've got a new microphone, so I'd like to get feedback on whether the audio quality is improving. Thanks again for watching. This is Strap. I'm out. May God bless you.